Pastor James here again with Adam, uh, going through part three of the uh, back mount, uh, go, go through some strategies that you can employ for the reactions of your partner. So just to get on Adam's back, make sure my knees are pinching and controlling. Obviously I want a seat belt, hand on top, elbows in, head on the side. So I'm waiting for his reaction, looking for his escape. So if he's going to fall to this side, my arms in the way. So if he falls this side, I'm immediately going to start attacking with my choke. Keep my knees pinched, okay? Slide my hand behind, pull my shoulders back, squeeze my elbows together, okay? So if he falls to this side, it's not a very good option for him to fall to this, this side. So he's just going to fall straight into my choke, okay? I can finish, okay? He starts to fall inside. This is more common. Okay, I want to try and keep my head here. So if he does fall to the side, it's harder for him to get his uh, back and shoulders on the floor. Okay, if my head's not there, it's going to be a lot easier for him to start to escape. Okay, so as I fall to the side, I want to try and grab the fat of the hand here. Okay, if I'm grabbing the wrist, it's easy for him to pop his arm out like this. Okay. So I want to try and grab the fat of the hand. I then want to bring my arm around this way, displace his head with my elbow, okay? Step on the hip and turn my foot to the side, okay? Now I'm going to bring my leg over the shoulder and then cross my ankles, okay? Also I like to hold this hand here so he can't connect his hands together, so I'll hold his fingers, okay? From here I can create a wrist lock. So I pull this in towards me. I'm going to bring my leg over. I finish with the wrist lock. If he straightens his arm, I get the armbar. So if he falls to the, the right side, which he should escape here, you come here. Okay? You bring his arm around, push his head away, then I can go in the same sort of position I would if I was going for a bow and arrow check with a gi. Okay? I've got a bow and arrow, I've got the gi here. Okay? I can get the wrist lock here, and bring the leg over the head, wrist lock again, and then I can get the um, he will give the arm bar because he's starting to kick his arm out. It's a very, very powerful wrist lock, so be really, really careful. Generally, you won't feel it, and then it, it will make a snapping noise. Okay, so one more time. If he's falling this side, okay, I immediately go for the choke. Okay, pinch my knees together, and then finish with my choking. Okay, on this side, I control the fat of the hand here as he's moving over here. Okay, grab the hand. Bring your arm around. Now, details on the feet. I can step on the hip and bring my foot across, then keep my foot on top like this. I don't want my foot to go between his legs. He can start to escape from here. Okay, so I'm trying to get my foot here on the side. Bring my leg all the way over. If I can't get my leg over here, I'm going to loop it, come over the shoulder, cross my ankles, pull my heels to my chest, wrist lock, leg over, and then finish with my arm bar. Okay. Sometimes, it works pretty good, so you can go left or right, depending on which side the guy wants to escape. If he's going the right side, this time he manages to get rid of my hooks. I haven't had time to drive in and I lose both hooks. I don't want him to put his weight on top of me. Okay, and then start to turn into my legs. And if I let go of the seatbelt, he's going to have some side control. Okay, so as soon as he starts to escape this way, immediately move my feet around like a clock. So move my feet around like this, come up on my knees, okay, find the hand, okay, loop the head, bring my leg over. I like to pin this arm, keep this arm away from this arm. So I don't want him to connect his hands, it make it harder for me to escape, uh, to break the grip and uh, finish the, the top uh, wrist lock or chicken wing, okay. So come here and finish with the Chicken wing, kimura, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So, last one, he moves off to the side. Okay, he starts to escape, move my feet around. Okay, we've also got the option here to choke. Okay, grab the wrist, loop, step over, and finish with the kimura. If he's really stubborn, really strong, and I can't get this, okay, sometimes I bring this arm through here. I push his face down with my, with my knee, so the head's sideways. I cross my ankles, come up and force my feet, and then rotate the neck. That's a really, really strong and dangerous technique, so clock head scissors, so be really careful on that one. Okay, 
So all three, you draw this with your partner, partner pull, pulls to my right, pulls over, get the grip on the back, and then finish with the choke. It goes over to this side, get the fat of the hand, step on the hip, get my foot on top, bring my elbow, offset his head, bring the leg over, wrist lock, arm bar. Okay, if he comes all the way out, here, immediately you start to walk my feet around, come to like 12 o'clock. Okay, come up. I can switch to the short choke here. We've got the Kimura chicken wing here. Switch my arm through. So here, switch my arm through. Get his head facing down. You can come up on one knee, like this, or you can cross your feet, come up on your toes. Traditionally, it's done like this. Okay, you need to rotate. Okay, really, really strong neck crank, so be really careful. Okay, so that's a basic strategy of how your partner's reacting, how they're going to escape. Got a rear naked choke, this side, arm bar wrist lock. If they completely escape, go for the top wrist lock or Kimura. Then you've got clock head scissors. So, a nice little series of attacks that you can add into your game, practice and drill with your partner. See you next time.